this has been a, a long road. I, you had to be excited to finally have these renderings out in the open where people can kind of start to look at just how beautiful and the vision for the future here. Well, we are. We're very excited. This journey started back in 2016 um, in earnest about three years ago. And, uh, you know, to go through that three year process of talking to our fans, to interviewing architects, um, coming up with designs, refining those designs, and get to today where we can actually share them uh, with the public is, uh, is a really important day, and it's closure on the first phase of this process. Just how excited should fans be about this? I mean, this is, I know it's a renovation project, but it, the, you looking at the renderings, it is going to be a completely new stadium. Well, it, that's exactly what it'll be. Uh, it'll be much more sustainable. We, we think we can get uh, virtually all the benefits of the new stadium. Uh, at significantly less cost and be able to reuse a lot of materials, which is a, which is a good story. Um, fan experience, fan comfort was at the very top of the list in everything that we did. Uh, having a solution that uh, can elevate the Gator Bowl so it can become a legitimate competitor for an expanded college football playoff. Uh, securing Florida, Georgia for years to come. Uh, being the type of facility uh, that can attract other events, other non-NFL events, concerts international soccer, all of that was taken in mind in terms of, of the design and we're really excited about the multi-purpose nature that, of this building and the way it was designed to support those other events. Now this will be able to bring a lot of different things to Jacksonville but most importantly it'll be able to keep the Jaguars here in Jacksonville. Of course the lease is coming up. Uh, uh, can you just clarify just how important it is to get a stadium deal done as a part of being able to extend the lease for the team here in Jacksonville. Yeah, I think, you know, there's not a lot of disagreement that this stadium has reached the end of its useful life, you know. And obviously, uh, we need to have a place to play that uh, meets the standards that our fans expect and, you know, that, that, that the team requires. And this stadium isn't it. That's why we started talking about this back in 2016. You know, I think now's our time. I mean, the city is, the city's exploding. The Jaguars are ascending. Um, it's time, and uh, you know we're going to do everything we can to to help seize the opportunity. And ultimately, this is one of those things. Like, if it doesn't get done, then there's another domino that would have to drop. It has to get done. Well, I think I think the important thing is that um, our interests are aligned. Uh, Jacksonville is really important to the Jaguars, and conversely, the Jaguars are really important to Jacksonville. And if, and if you begin with that alignment of interest, we, we should be able to succeed. I have all the confidence in the world uh, that we can, and I look forward to you know, starting that uh, journey um, in earnest with the city. Okay, how far along have you got with those discussions? Is there a price tag already on this project? Over the past three years, we've come up with a design. Uh, we've had pre-construction um, manager that's been working alongside the architect. What, what people saw today would be in the range of 1.3 to 1.4 billion dollars, and uh, you know it's uh, significantly less than if we would have built a new stadium. Building a new stadium with what was released today would be almost a billion dollars more. Uh, so we think this is the the most efficient way to go. We, this is the least disruptive way to go. We think. Uh, and it's also uh, the least expensive. And does that price tag include some of the work that uh, I guess? In what lot, Jay? No, it's 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 a it's a much bigger project than that. I mean, I think we, um, you know, our our goal is is pretty simple: is to support um, the mayor and others that care about downtown development that we can contribute to help make downtown the an economic engine that can generate revenue that then can be reinvested back throughout the community, particularly in those underserved communities. How we get there. Um, we're seeing what's happening with Brooklyn and how the growth and development in Brooklyn is spilling into La Villa and working its way from the west to the east to downtown. Um, what we believe uh, needs to happen is to have a similar catalytic development that's happening on the east side of downtown. It's working towards the west. The stadium obviously will be the, uh, the showcase piece, but that doesn't bring people to live there. It doesn't bring people to, to work there, 365. So that's also, also part of this project. Uh, we're also very, very interested in doing what we can that, you know, if the University of Florida chooses the fairground site for uh, 
the graduate campus. We think that'll do great things in terms of spurring that development and, and, and creating equal development uh, attraction from the east to the west. And finally have a downtown that can be that economic engine that, that, that is happening in so many other cities. So in your view, some of the improvements to Lot J and the stadium are two completely separate, separate no, projects? No, no, we think, they're, you know, we think they're, they're intertwined. I think that they, it's, it's, not, it's not just Lot J. It's, it's parking lots outside the stadium in order to create a neighborhood. And we think that's the best path to be able to serve communities like out east that have been uh, neglected for far too long, to create those connections in our community from, from the river through the sports complex to the out east neighborhood um, you know, and beyond. So um, you know, there's a tremendous opportunity in front of us. And what's the timeline for this project? Well, our schedule would um, uh, have serious construction begin after the conclusion of the 2025 NFL season. So hopefully February of 2026. And then at that point, it depends on how you approach the, the construction. If you do it in the least disruptive, quickest and cheapest manner, you start the renovations and then you finish the renovations. And those renovations would be completed in time for the 2028 season. One of the trade-offs with that is that you can't play games in, in the stadium during that renovation approach. You'd have to find someplace temporary to play in Jacksonville, you know, which comes with a, a big price tag, probably over $125 million, or you go play um, at an, closer to NFL-ready stadium, which could be Gainesville or Orlando. The other alternative is to do the renovations over a four-year period. Okay? That will allow you to you'd be renovating during the offseason, you'd stop, and then you'd have the games. And those games in those four years would be played basically in a stadium that's under construction. It keeps the games in downtown Jacksonville, but it comes with a hefty price tag, probably around $190 million more expensive uh, to, to do it that way. Can we talk about some of the pros and cons, I would guess, of both directions? Obviously, the four-year plan, more expensive, uh, but you already have an aging stadium, and fans now, you have to start to concern yourself with the fan experience, right? Of You have an aging stadium, and now you've got a construction project going on at the same time. You know, from our, from our perspective, we, you know, we understand both. We've come up with a plan to do it both ways. Um, we want the plan that's the least disruptive to our fans and to the team, that's the most efficient, and that's the least expensive. That approach is to do it over two years and then play the games in Gainesville or Orlando. But, you know, that's just our opinion. There's a lot of other opinions that um, have equal and greater weight. And, uh, you know, the, the one thing about this subject that I'm excited about is if we get into where the team's going to be playing during the renovation, that means we got a deal on the stadium, okay? And if we can get that done, I know we'll be able to solve where the team plays during the interim. Right. Yeah, as long as you get a deal on the stadium, you can kind of figure out the rest. Um, I know that the beans kind of got out, or cat got out of the bag a little bit on the possibility of the team needing to play elsewhere for the two years during the construction process. Um, the, the feedback from the folks here in Jacksonville and and even the feedback from, from the city at large and uh, since then, does, does, how much of an impact does that have on how you decide between the two and the four, or is it just between the dollars and cents with the city? Well, yeah, I think there's two things. Uh, one, when, when that discussion came out, it was without the complete story. People didn't know that it's going to cost upwards of $200 million more to do it over four years, over two years. They didn't know that, you know, you're going to be, those games during those four years are going to be in, in a stadium that's under construction. Right. But, you know, of course we, 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 we want to solicit feedback, and that's why starting this Monday, uh, we're going to be doing 14 town hall meetings throughout all Jacksonville between, between June 12th and June 22nd, 14 separate town hall meetings, inviting the public to come in, giving them more details about the project, inviting their feedback, getting their questions, and I know coming out of that 10-day public review process, we'll have a better plan. Awesome. Um, and one last thing, premium seating. Is there any change to the premium seating around the stadium in the new plan? Well, it, it'll be upgraded for sure, and that's one of the key economic drivers of this, of this event. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we continue to have the ability uh, for all fans to be able to afford tickets to come to Jaguar games. So, you know, uh, two-thirds of our seats in, the, in, in this new design will not be premium seating, so there'll be plenty of places.